And welcome back, everyone. Ellington here, and we are back with Total War Rome 2. And we have got ourselves a three versus three on none other than, you guessed it, the settlement of Berdigala. Now, this battle was sent in by G Gadriel, Gadriel um, who is playing Iceni here. Now, his allies in this fight are, we've got Saba being commanded by Holy Banana, and we have got Masasely being commanded by Wild Sweet. Now, for the attackers, which right off the bat, you can see we do have a massive sally out as well as some gorillas. We've got our Verney being commanded by Emil. We have got Bactria being commanded by Jack, Jack something, I can't remember the rest of it. And then finally, somewhere, we have Bowie Eye. There's Bowie Eye's artillery. Being commanded by Amin? Amin, I think? So, what we've got going on here, you can see we've got Masasi with the Gorilla Deploy, Numidian Light Infantry coming in and engaging our Vernis units. What that is then allowing to happen is the Iceni chariots are able to get into the line of the enemy with less casualties because they can't throw javelins, they can't go shield wall as, as well. Um, it just overall is a far more successful thing than we could see Saba's camel spearmen coming in and getting behind Bactria, getting into his elite Persian archers. Got some Celtic warriors trying to come help out as well as a heavy horse coming in and hitting the back of the desert levee. But here come the big guns from Saba. We've got Sabian camel cataphracts on the field of battle now. Um, Bactria is going to have a tough time because their Bactrian hillmen can't deal with this. And I mean, the scale thorax hoplites will do fine enough, but they don't have javies. So that's going to be the toughest part is it's one of your best defenses against cavalry is javelins and hoplites don't get them. More chariots coming. Oh, this chariot's about to get a ton of kills. Coming in on some archers. There's nothing these archers can do about it. Just got to keep them moving. Keep on going. Keep on going. He's already at like 200 kills. 257, 266. Oh, my God. He's getting so many kills on just this one chariot. The other chariot, I think it did relatively well. 370. Oh, my God. No shield wall from the Chosen Swords. And they're so blobbed up. Oh, this is just a heavenly sight for chariots is to have big blobs like this, um, especially when they're not using things to their advantage like shield wall. Now, so that means the chariot literally just gets to go ham on these units here. The archers, there's nothing they could do about it. There you go. Now they're popping the shield wall, so that should slow down the chariots a little bit, but you still have a lot of juicy targets back here. Oh my God, Silver Chevron 700 and 800. Holy crap. No shield wall from this chosen sword. They're still going. God almighty. The cab back here, you can see, look at 328, 189. You can see back in the background, we got more stuff coming in from the other side there. Chariot's gonna break. 969, 971. Is he gonna hit a thousand? Oh, he was about not to. There he is, he got it, look at that. The thousand kill mark on a chariot. Not something you see too typically often, and usually when you do, it's a, it's it gets like when you have player drops and things of the such. Um, from what I understand, this did not have any drops in it. And even then, look at the Camel Cataphracts, 426. Is the other one still alive? Yeah, I think the other one's gone. So Bactria looks like he has dealt with his side. Our Verni is really, really beat up and they still have more coming. Armored Desert Chariots from Masasli as well as more cavalry from Saba. Getting ready to come in and you still have some Masasli Gorilla Deploy units sitting here too. Not sure why, so they, they engaged one unit here, but they're not they're not stopping it from being surrounded. I'm a little intrigued by that. Now they're just gonna use that lose that Numidian light infantry for nothing. I 
I understand what they're probably, they're trying to save these units to be able to support these cab units and the chariots when they come in. But they might have been able to, to really affect that little combat right there if they had gone in. So let's see, Thorax Swords for Bactria, 150, 136, 136, 129. I'm pretty sure the Persian Light Archers got almost white. Um, but it looks like Bactria's infantry, like their heavy infantry, seems to be relatively healthy. Bactrian Hillman over here. Um, Arverni, though, man, 64, 79, 92, 98, 55, 88, 50. I mean, gosh, he got, he lost half of his army. Because if you look at almost everything he's got is like half strength. So he lost half of his army in that. And almost, I'm pretty sure, all of his archers. If he has any archers, it's just like, you know, a couple here and there. Heavy horse coming in to help out. But here comes the Saba cavalry. Celtic warriors just going to get disintegrated. It's 35, 38, 40, 42 kills on the charge. Artillery just folk is now just shooting straight at the cavalry. Not even thinking about his own men that are in there. He's just shooting right into it. 98, 100, 102. The other cab unit, zero kills so far. The other armored desert chariots haven't even come in yet. This has been a fiery beginning to this battle. Where's he going? So I think he might just try to loop around and maybe try and get into like these Celtics. The Celtic warriors don't have shield walls, so they would be a far more vulnerable unit. Oh, Javi tosses. Ow. Did get a good charge, though. Well, maybe he didn't. Yeah, maybe he didn't. Oh. And Javi tosses from behind now from the Arvernio sword. He is getting into some of the Bowie Eye units now. So Bowie Eye is pretty healthy. Bowie Eye was almost un not all untouched, but he did not take very much damage in that initial uh, sally out because Arverni took almost all of it and Bowie Eye was hidden back here. So he really didn't take much in the way of losses. I think majority of what he did lose was just like low tier Celtic warrior type stuff. But here come the chariots. Let's see how he handles this. So take your position. Let's basically make the right call again. Going in with the infantry. Get stuck in, then send the chariots. He's going to come right down the line. No shield wall either from Bowie Eye. Now he's going to get into the back lines. Oh, no, they're all out of position. Oh, man, this could be rough. Got a bunch of Celtic bows. All the infantry's out of position. 142. Nothing else so far. 182. Now, if they can get Javis on them, they can finish this quick. Is it two chevrons? Because he got a lot of Osworn. A lot of this was Osworn back here, so. Now he's broken. But there is a possibility he could come back. 258. Might get a couple kills on the way out, too. No, doesn't look like it. So the other two chariots are sitting back a little ways. They're not coming in quite yet. And think about this. Like, this, this siege hasn't even started, right? Because of all of this stuff, a lot of time has been committed to just dealing with the sally out. So the defenders have bought themselves a lot of time. In the end... The question of these kinds of sally outs comes to two things, right? One, did you waste enough time? And number two, 
did you kill enough, right? Because when you do these sally outs, you're doing these sally outs at a disadvantage already, right? You're, you're committing a smaller force to go up against a larger force. And if it does not kill enough, then you are taking away a huge chunk of resources to your defense, right? So if the sally out fails, then the siege is going to be really, really, really rough. Um, which is why the secondary hope is that you burn off a lot of time off the clock. Because even though you may now be undermanned even more than you already were undermanned, you may be able to stonewall them long enough that they just run out of time. So those are the two questions. Now, in my opinion, a lot of damage was done on this sally out. Uh, Bactria was hit relatively hard, and Arverni was hit really hard. Arverni is really, really weak right now. Um, and they still have a little bit of ammunition on their on their side here, the defenders do. They've got two armored desert chariots left, and they actually still have an Iceni chariot as well. And then as you can see, Iceni has a lot of chosen board chosen board, chosen bands still left. Now, Saba pretty much elected to go very, very little infantry. Almost everything Saba brought was in the cavalry uh, category. You know, he's got a little bit of the, you know, he's got, what, four Sabian swords here, and then he's got a couple Moscot Marauders, but that's it. That's six units. Everything else he brought was cavalry. So, um, you know, is it enough? That's the question, and that's what we're going to find out here soon. You know, by looking at the clock, we can tell this is obviously not going to be a timed battle, right? It's not going to be a battle that the defenders are going to win by, by time. So, but... The question is, because it's a relatively short battle, is it because the defenders have too little to defend this and so they just get overwhelmed? Or do the attackers, did the defenders get a good enough sally out to kill enough of the attackers to make this a quick battle? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. You guys remember that as a kid? Uh, you know, I know we've got some younger people, on, you know, watching the channel, but... Um, you know, who here is old enough to remember Saturday morning cartoons? The only time kids would willingly get up early, early in the morning was on a Saturday, not even on school day, but on a Saturday so that they could get up and watch Saturday morning cartoons like Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon and Digimon, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, stuff like that. Who here remembers that? And if you do, what was your favorite? Put it in the comment section. I want to know. Here we go. The Armored Desert Chariot's coming back in. Doesn't look like these ones are doing Well, this one's doing pretty good. 229, 230. But this one's getting beat up pretty bad. 54. It's already at half strength. Looks like Bowie Eye was pretty well set up for this one. And so these have been taking a lot of javies. 102 kills. 330. This one's doing pretty good. This one was able to kind of get in on the groups. This one looks like it got focused down by Javis. And... Three Chevrons with 361. It's pretty good for a Chariot. Alright, here we go. Bactria landing. They're the first ones to the walls. And they are met with lots of javelins from Saba. Thorax swords losing, I mean, God, at least 30 men just dropping on the walls. Let's take a look at the combat here. And of course, got to get some screenshots. Then over this way, we had uh, Iceni getting in on this Chosen Sword ban. Now, he's going with the shield wall for the Thorax. And as you can see, we've got the what's left of the Bowie Iron Archers sitting here, getting some shots off into the backs here of Iceni. Now, luckily for Iceni, they are shooting from the, the shield side, which is going to be a little bit less effective, but it's still a pretty good shot to take. 
Um, unfortunately, due to the defending factions, they really have no answer to this. Um, now, thankfully, their sally out killed a lot of the archers, which is a good thing because if they didn't, they would be in a lot of trouble. Bertigala is extremely, the, or at least this corner is extremely attacker friendly because the angles you can get on it and the bad archer positions for the defenders. Uh, so if they had a lot of archers still, the, the defenders would be in a lot of trouble. But as you can see, it's basically just going to turn into a swarm. Now, Vernie's just moving his units up towards the wall. He's not even put them, putting them on towers. And I'm not 100% sure why he doesn't... Like, okay, so Bowie is already on these. That's why. Because Bowie, I, they really want to get some towers up on this area here so they can get more units. Remember, the more towers on the walls, the quicker your units can get on the walls. The less towers that are there, the slower it's going to go. So it's just one of those things. You want to try and get those units on the wall as quickly as possible. Because otherwise, what happens is you're attacking units that are already on the wall. They're just going to get swarmed, annihilated, and by the time that your other units get on, they're all going to be dead, and now it just is a repeating process that is extremely painful. It's really not something anybody really enjoys. Thoraxor is just getting annihilated. But they're getting swarmed by three, four units, you know what I mean? Over here, like, they're able to hold a little bit stronger because it's a smaller area that they can kind of get in, fill the spot, keep a, a lane open, right? But over here is where they have a lot of problem because there's a lot more space they have to cover. It's gonna be tough, it'll be really tough. They could probably try to get an O-Sworn up here now. Although it's probably gonna be too late for that too. Yeah, I think it really is. They need to get like another thorax up on here to go support this spot right here. You can see they already have a chosen sword getting up to come up and help this. Bowie Eye now getting onto the walls. They actually have already engaged over here. Sword followers engaging on some chosen sword band. I love the, the stark green and blue contrast. Yeah! Blah, blah. You can imagine the like voice actor calls. Okay, so what we need for this game is we need some uhs and oohs and blah, some you know, generic battle sounds. You know, so I could imagine all the voice actors on there. Okay, so you want me like, so should it be more like a ah, or more like a ah? You know, no, nobody. I, I I think it'd be hilarious to listen to. Could you imagine just going and you know, all you have to do is sit behind behind this microphone and just scream and yell and in rage. I feel like I'd be pretty good for that. I should try it out. Pretty good at screaming and yelling and <laughs> yelling in rage. There's so much here. They they've condensed themselves to this small area, and now the defenders are just able to pile up units there. No artillery to stop them. Like, ugh. Looks like they are thinking about coming over this way, but I think it's a bad idea. This area, well, I mean, they might. It basically comes down to this. So it's mono a mono, right? They have one, two, three versus one, two, three. But now the question comes in, what about quality? Thorax, mascots, I would say in the end, probably just kind of cancel each other out. Back to the guard is better than the sword band. Then you add in, well, positioning. So obviously defenders have the wall. So as soon as these guys land on the wall, they're gonna get javied to hell. So that's gonna lose them 15, 20, 25 men right off the bat. 
Then they're going to get charged by Mascot Marauders, which is going to get them probably 30 kills on the, on the charge. I say the winner, I think the winners in this situation are going to be the defenders over on this position, which is why I think it's a bad idea. Ooh, the Camel Cataphracts came back 300 kills. When I say came back, like they're being annoying again. I, yeah, I think this is a done deal as a whole. I hate to say it. Hate to call it with a couple minutes left, but I just don't see any way that this becomes a, a attacker win at this point. No charge. And he, he uses his frenzy charge, but doesn't charge. Sword band. Looks like they're trying to kind of like reposition. What I would do is I would put the sword band in, pull the mascot marauder back, then charge it again and get the actual charge you should want. Yeah, they didn't get as much in the way as I thought they would. I'm a little surprised that they didn't get as many javies off in the beginning. I'm not sure why. I wonder if possibly the maybe a fire will turned off on accident in the beginning or something. I'm not sure. Bowie Eye and Arverni just getting surrounded on the other side. Yeah, this is going to be a, a rough, a rough ending. But I'll tell you what, you really can't pass up a, a thousand, thousand kill chariot, that's for sure. Both Moscow Marauders are obviously tired because of using their Frenzy Charge ability. So this is when you, once again, you want to try and get these units in to, to replace those. Thorax Sword just being a little goofy here. They're doing all sorts of weird stuff. I think he's using uh, formation attack, first of all, so that tends to make your units go a little wonky sometimes. Chosen Swords, 34 kills, 39 on a Thorax. Yeah, this is rough. But I think that just shows that that sally out was a successful one. You know what I mean? It it killed plenty. Um, you know, I think, you know, taking out pretty much half of our Verney right off the bat, I think that really is a, uh, a, a big win. And they're allowing those Moscow Marauders to keep fighting. Damn. You're tired too damn bad. Army loss is now kicking in. It's basically going to come down to just these two generals, I betcha. Two very healthy generals. And please, uh, so he's burning the tower. I mean, okay, I guess. Not really sure what that's really gonna do for you in all reality. Then are you gonna burn the other tower now? Looks like Masaisley looks like they're about to march right out this gate and go right into this combat. Don't do it, Arverni. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Oh, the Saba General broke, shattered. Very interesting. Mm, indubitably. Yeah, it's literally just the two generals now. Don't go. Don't. Just. Orderly. So, Arverni's going up this tower, and now Bowie is going to go up this tower. And we're about to see a massacre. I'm a little surprised the defenders aren't just like swarming this unit though. I 
mean, they're letting him, like, form out. Well, they're jabbing the crap out of him, don't get me wrong, but. Now, I assume we're going to see a, a bunch of them just charge in and swarm it and kill it. Nope, they're just going to give him a slow, painful death. But, as you can see from the timer, that is going to be it for this. You can see the Arverni general gone, and the Bowie-Eye general soon to follow. And that is a GG. Let's go look at some kills here real quick. So, first off, we have got Wild Sweet as Masesili with 1735. His three chariots doing very well. This one probably could have done a little better, but doing very well. But his army's super healthy. He barely saw combat. Uh, Holy Banana, 25-27 as Saba. Uh, Cav did pretty good. 312, 428, 423, 194. Pretty solid. Infantry, you know, some of it's pretty healthy. Um, a couple saw some combat. Finally, Gadriel as Iceni with 2,998 kills. You missed out on 3k by two kills. You couldn't sneak out two more before the game ended. Come on. Come on. Obviously, the highlight here. 1,009 kills with one silver chevron on one of the Iceni chariots. Uh, a lot of his infantry barely, barely fought, barely hurt. Look at that. For the attackers, this is a rough game. It, it, we've all had it happen. Uh, anybody who tries to tell me they've never had a rough sally out on them is a liar or they've only played one game of Rome. Because it ha if you have played a, enough games in this, in this game, enough matches, it's happened to everybody. And it's rough. There's, you know, sometimes you just get a bad draw. You know what I mean? Jack Ultra, that's what it is. 1095 as Bactria. Amin as Bowie with 1048. And then, unfortunately, Arverni taking the brunt of that sally out. 925 being commanded by Emil Zvig. Zvig? Well, that is going to be it for today's battle. Thank you guys so much for joining. Don't forget that if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys next time.